Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam, rasulillah. We are about to start the next part of this chapter, of this subject, purification. The next chapter in this subject is in Mas'ha al-Khuffayn, the permissibility of wiping on the boots or the socks, whatever covers the foot all the way up to just above the ankles, the area that is normally washed in the wudu. If somebody is wearing something like this, then he is allowed to wipe on it. And the wiping on it, you just have to wet your hand in the water. And then with this wet hand, you just wipe on the top of the foot. You don't, you don't wipe the whole foot, just the top of the foot. You just run your fingers from your toes up to the lower leg, just like that. Right hand on the right foot, left hand on the left foot, just like this at once, okay? This is how it's done. Now the Mas'ha al uh, Imam al-Nawawi says it is narrated by an innumerable, innumerable number of Sahaba. Some scholars counted 70 of the Sahaba, different Sahaba, companions of the Prophet ﷺ narrating this. And that is why um, yani, people who reject wiping on the Khuf, they are considered innovators, the people who are deviant in the religion. To the extent that some scholars of Sunnah have mentioned the Mas'ha al khufain in the books of Aqidah, although it is, has nothing to do with creed or belief, it has nothing to do, but it does differentiate the people of Sunnah from the people of Bid'ah, the deviant people. Um, uh, it is known that the Shia reject wiping on the, on the socks or the boots. Also the Khawarij, uh, the Khawarij is another deviant group, they also uh, reject that. But the ahadith are plenty. There's no, there's just too many ahadith to mention this, to mention in this subject. Uh, there are also ahadith specifically mentioning wiping on the socks. Tawadda Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa masaha ala al-jawrabayni wa na'alay. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has wiped on socks upon which he had, he had also a na'al. Na'al is, uh, it's like sandal. Uh, uh, sandals, basically sandals. 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 But he, he was wearing a sock underneath the sandals. Okay. So sandals. basically he wiped. And that is why when you find some, some hadith talking about wiping on sandals, it is not permissible to wipe on sandals if you are wearing them on a barefoot. You can't. Because you have to be wiping on something that actually covers the whole foot up to just above the ankle. The sandals don't do that. The sandals show your skin. So the hadith, the, 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 the hadith that talk about wiping on sandals, uh, those, the scholars understood them that they meant wiping on sandals underneath which there is a sock. You follow? Mm -hmm. But it is not permissible to wipe on sandals. So you want to wipe the legs, you do it this way? Yes, exactly. That's, that's all that. You don't wipe the bottom, you don't have to wipe the side, just the top. Just the top, yeah. No, uh, no, they prayed in them. They prayed if they were wearing boots uh, the, uh, or sandals on top of socks. You no, know, you pray in them. You, you wipe on them and you pray in them. Okay? Wow. If you're going to take them off, then you make wudu. Uh, the other thing is, is it better to take them off and make wudu or is it better just to wipe on them? It is actually better to wipe than to take them off. If you have worn, because this is the condition, you have to have worn the boots or the socks after you had made wudu. Uh -huh. You cannot wear them without, uh, if you're not in a state of ritual purity. Ritual purity, which means that you had already made your wudu, done your wudu, and then uh, you will put them on, then your wudu was broken, now you can wipe. Now you can wipe on them. Wudu. Yes, for subsequent wudu. But if somebody wore them without having a state of wudu, which is ritual purity, he cannot, he cannot wipe on them. Um, and so this is mas'h, you'll find people, a hadith talking about wiping on socks, wiping on boots, wiping on sandals, only wiping on sandals, there are some ahadith and some sahaba did it, but scholars said no, they, uh, it is meant that they actually wore them on top of uh, socks. I will mention something here for you, for instance, uh, uh, because there are a hadith, you might read them, and you might understand 
that uh, you can wipe on a sandal. Um, Ibn Hajar says, Ibn Qayyim says, هذه من الأحاديث المشكلة جدا. He says these ahadith are problematic in understanding because the ahadith do not explicitly say that they were wearing socks underneath. Except this hadith that we just read, that the Prophet ﷺ wiped on the sandals and the socks, which means he was wearing socks and sandals on top. But there are some other hadith that indicate that some sahaba wiped on sandals, but they don't specifically or explicitly say that they are wearing socks. And that is why uh, scholars, you know, uh, talked about these hadith. They felt that they were problematic because everybody who has narrated the wiping of the Prophet ﷺ indicated that he wiped on boots or on socks or on socks with something on top of them. Okay, this is how it is. That's, uh, it is not allowed at all. This is ijma, consensus of scholars. It is not allowed to wipe on sandals that you wore on top of um, just... Uh, uh, oh yes, they had. <laughs> yeah, they had socks. They had, yes, that's it. they had. It doesn't mean that they were so fancy like our socks, Yanni. Yeah. But they used to uh, sew, they had this uh, yeah, uh, knitting, they, they used to do things like this. Uh, in the Quran, it says, They used to do knitting. Uh, it's mentioned in the Quran. So uh, there was a woman, you know, this had, ayah talks about a woman in Mecca who used to uh, knit and knit and knit. After she makes a big thing, she's just under, uh, she, she was, she, uh, she, she was uh, somewhat retarded mentally. And she used to do that. She used to knit and knit and knit and then she undo it. She would undo it. And that's what she used to do. And um, the Quran says, do not be like somebody who does that, which means to, with, with regards to your good deeds. You do your good deeds, good deeds, good deeds, and then you come and undo everything by neglecting the good deeds and indulging into sin. So Allah says, no, this is not somebody who is sane. This is not uh, the behavior of somebody who is sane or in his right mind. This is a behavior of somebody who has lost their mind. Because people at that time, they used to make fun of that lady Say, oh, look, she's knit, she, she knitted all this the blanket or something, and then she undid it at once. Allah says, you, you guys are doing the same thing by when it comes to spiritual matters. You, you, you build and you build and you build, and then suddenly you demolish everything as well. Now, uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, just a couple of more things related to uh, wiping on. What is the duration? And the ahadith are, there's many ahadiths on this matter. Uh, hadith Safwan ibn Asal, we read it before in a previous class. He said, Prophet ﷺ used to instruct us not to take off our boots when we are traveling for three days and three nights. Illa min janaba. If somebody comes into the state of major impurity through ejaculation, for instance, or uh, sexual intercourse without even without ejaculation, then uh, or a wet dream, then he would have to take them off and do the ghusl. You cannot wipe on the khuf uh, if you are in state of janab. It's only, it is only a replacement for what? For wudu. It's not a replacement for ghusl. Uh, but if somebody broke his wudu some, in some other way, إِلَّا مِنْ غَائِتٍ أَوْ بَوْلٍ أَوْ نَوْمٍ Remember we talked about sleep, mm -hmm. that sleep breaks because of this hadith as well, made it very clear. Uh, so three days and three nights, that's like 72 hours if you are traveling. A day and a night if you are not traveling, if you are residing. And when does a day and night or the, when does this duration start from? Scholars differed on this. this um, some of them said from the time you put them on. Some of them said from the time you broke your wudu. Some of them said from the time you, you wiped for the first time. So uh, maybe this last one is the stronger, but there's no specific hadith on this matter. Okay, it may differ in a few hours, that's all. Uh, he wore them maybe at four o'clock. He broke wudu, his wudu at five o'clock. Then he wiped at Maghrib time, for instance. Okay, then when does he start counting? From either three points, he can start counting. But even if he counts from the point that he wiped the first time, it's still okay. It is still, still okay. One more important point. If you take them off after you have, you have wiped on them and you're in state of purity and wudu now, you're in state of purity and you took them off, does it break your wudu automatically? It doesn't. The stronger opinion is that it doesn't. Because the hadith is clear that he used to tell him, do not take them off, uh, except for such and such. But if you took them off, you cannot wipe on them again. Because you cannot wipe unless, unless you, have ha you, have, you had put them on after you washed. 
not put them on after you wiped. You follow? Mm-hmm. But it, does it break your wudu? By the way, the stronger opinion is it doesn't break your wudu, although the majority of Muslim scholars say it does break your wudu. But uh, there is no, uh, if you look at the evidences, there is no hadith or any kind of narration that indicates so. It's just that uh, they, they concluded it. You know, somebody uh, extracted, extracted from his own understanding and many scholars accepted that. So it is a majority of scholars who say it automatically breaks your wudu if you take it off. And then uh, some of them said no. If you take it off, then you have to wash your, your leg and you're okay. Some said, no, you have to make wudu. And the stronger opinion is that it does not break your wudu. And this is the opinion of somebody like Sheikh uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. And really, the evidence goes with that. Because when we are in a state of purity, state of wudu, tahara, nothing breaks it unless we have firm evidence that we have broken it. Remember the hadith that say, you, uh, if you even doubt if you doubt that something happened, then your wudu is still intact, unless you are 100% sure. So we have a hadith telling us that your, your wudu is never invalid unless you are 100% sure that you have done something that breaks it. And there's not a single text that says taking them off breaks your, breaks your wudu. Um, okay, that we talked about this point. Now, uh, if the time has passed, like 24 hours have passed, does, is your wudu automatically broken by that? No, it's not automatically broken. Uh, but you cannot wipe again. You cannot wipe again, but your wudu that you already have now, you, it's okay, still okay, okay? Um, you take them off for janaba. We talked about where to, where to wipe, the part that you wipe, the time that you wipe. Okay. Finally, they talk about wiping on something. If you have a bandage on, a bandage or a dressing, you can wipe on that as well. And that is not limited by time. That is limited by the need. As long as you have a wound and it's covered by a bandage or by a dressing, you can wipe on that and you wash the rest. Let's say the dressing is right here. So you wash below it and you wash above it. You can get a sponge and wash below and above. And here, all you have to do is wet your finger and wipe all over. Wipe as if you have washed it, okay? As if, but you don't wet it, uh, just only your fingers are wet, okay? And there's no limit. What about fungal infections, especially the ones between the toes? Yes, uh, but uh, what, what about them? Like, uh, like do, do, does, uh, because what? if you put water on it again, again, fungal infections will propagate with that. Mm. That's what usually the dermatologists say that you better not put water on it. All the fungal infections. But, but, but the thing is, no, actually, this is not true. I think uh, because even that one, you can, you can wash it, mop it, and dry it, dry it good with yeah. with a Kleenex or something. Uh, the thing is, if 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 we if it's one hundred percent sure that a, a wound or a, a disease or a lesion would be harmed by water, then you don't have to wash it. That is based on a different hadith, in, in which there was a hadith in which a man had a wound in his head, yeah, and uh, he. Ha- woke up in a state of janaba. He had a wet dream, and he said to he asked the companions, uh, "Can I make tayammum?" And they said, "No, you have to make the full ghusl." So he made the full ghusl. He did the full wash, and obviously he got infected. He got infected because he died after that. And when they talked to Prophet Sallallahu he got very angry with them. He said to them, "He he didn't need to wash. He could have just done tayammum." Uh, he says, he says, why don't they ask? If they don't know, they shouldn't give a fatwa without knowing. They have killed him. That's what he said. He reprimanded them very hard. He says, uh, to the cure of for ignorance is to ask people. So he was very harsh on them on this subject. Now, so if something is harmed, then you do not have to wash it. You do not have to wash it. This is the this is general rule. Therefore, can we equate fungal inspe- infection to something like a wound? Yes. I used to have fungal infection every time, and I wash it purely. I clean it up. I even apply all the back, and it's not. A yeah. Handful. No, no. I'm I'm not saying specific. I'm just saying in the general rule. Okay. But uh, if if the doctors for sure say that, uh, because this we go back to the experts in it. Uh, if the experts say that no water should not come here for a reason and we're sure about that and uh, that's based on studies or research then then we cannot argue with it 
But if it is if it's his a personal opinion or a weak opinion, then no, you cannot go by that. No. Okay. I think that's covered this uh Masha Kufain. Okay, good. Stop here. Fifteen minutes. <laughs>